If you're building a website, having a privacy policy page isn't just a good idea, it's a requirement in many cases. And in this video, I'll show you how to create a professional privacy policy page for free using user centrics and then add it directly to a WordPress website. And whether you want to use the automatic embed option or fully customize the layout and styling to match your site's design, I'm going to walk you through every step. And real quick, before we get started, if you get any value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Helps me bring you more resources, and it keeps you up to date with all of the AI, web, and tech trends happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, let's get started. To get started with UserCentric's Privacy Policy Generator, head to their official landing page, and I've linked to it in the video description below, and click the Start Free button. Next, you'll be prompted to create a free account. You can sign in using your Google or Microsoft account, or manually enter your email address to continue. If you don't have an account yet, just click the Sign Up link at the bottom of the form, and you can sign up that way. I'm going to sign in with my Google account, so I'll select that option. And then after logging in, you'll land on your user Centrics dashboard. And from here in the center of the screen, you'll see a section that says generate your first privacy policy. So to get started, go ahead and click the generate privacy policy button. Then before we dive into the setup, take a look at the top of the screen. You'll notice a progress bar showing three steps, welcome company information and data handling information. This makes it easy to track your progress as you're going through setting up your privacy policy. But it's three quick steps and we just gotta answer some quick questions. So first, let's walk through the first section, which is choose your settings. This is where you'll define the basic structure of your privacy policy, including its name, the language it'll be written in, and which privacy regulations it will comply with. So first, you'll wanna enter your name for your privacy policy. This name won't appear publicly, but it helps you stay organized within your user centrics dashboard. You could use whatever makes sense for the specific site or brand you're working on. Next, select the language for your policy. At the time of recording this tutorial, user centrics offers four language options, English, Italian, German, and Dutch. So just choose the one that matches your audience or region. Lastly, you'll choose the legal framework for your policy. Since we're using the free plan, the only available option right now is GDPR, which is the European Data Protection Regulation. The other two options, US Privacy Laws and California's CCPA, are locked and only accessible through a paid upgrade. You'll see a small lock icon next to those options to indicate that. All right, then once all these fields are filled in, go ahead and click the next button in the bottom right to move on to the next step in the setup process. All right, next is the company information. This section is all about providing your organization's contact details so your privacy policy can properly reflect your business or website. It's a straightforward setup, but it's important to fill everything out accurately as this information is what users and regulatory bodies will refer to for privacy-related inquiries. Start by entering your company name exactly as it appears legally. In this example, I'm using my company, SageWave Media LLC, but you'll want to use your own business or organization name. Below that, enter a valid email address that users can contact for any privacy concerns. This should be a monitored inbox as you may occasionally receive inquiries related to data protection. Then enter your phone number. You'll select your country code from the dropdown and then select your phone number in the space provided. And then after that, enter the domain associated with your privacy policy. This should be the main website where the policy will be published. Below that is the privacy contact section. Here you'll be asked whether your company has a data protection officer, also known as a DPO. If you do, select yes and be prepared to enter their contact information. If not, just select no. Most small businesses or personal websites won't have a DPO, so it's totally fine to choose no here unless you're legally required to have one. All right, once all those required fields are complete, click the next button in the lower right corner to continue to the next section of the privacy policy setup. Okay, this is where you'll tell user centrics how your organization collects, uses, and manages personal data. The platform uses this information to generate a privacy policy tailored to your business's practices. Now, before we dive in, just a quick note, 
I'm filling this out for a demo website, so many of my answers will be somewhat vague, and I'll be selecting no for several of these questions. But if you're setting this up for a live website, it's very important that you answer each question as accurately and completely as possible. This ensures that your privacy policy reflects your real data practices and helps keep you compliant with regulations like GDPR. All right, let's walk through this step by step. So first, products and services. This is where you'll enter a brief description of your company's offerings. And for this demo, I'm typing educational content and tutorials. This helps personalize the policy to your business model. Next is data collection. Here you'll indicate whether your company collects device data or any other types of user information. And again, since this is a demo, I'm leaving this unchecked, but if your site collects analytics, use contact forms or runs advertising, you'll wanna select this and describe what data is collected and why. Next is data protection. And here you'll answer whether you implement any specific data protection measures. Again, I'm selecting no for the demo, but if your site uses encryption, firewalls, or other protections, be sure to list them here. Moving on to data sharing, and if your website shares user data with third-party services like email platforms, CRMs, or ad networks, you'll need to check yes. Next is the cookies and tracking technologies. Here you'll paste the URL of your cookie policy page. If you're using a cookie banner or any tracking scripts, you should already have a policy page to link to. So just enter that URL here. Next, we have international data transfers and opt-outs. This asks you where you transfer your data outside the European Economic Area, the EEA. I'm gonna say no for this example, but if you use third-party tools based in the US or elsewhere, you may need to select yes. Next is children's privacy. Does your site have any age restrictions or target children under a specific age? If not, you can simply select no. Next, we have direct marketing and communications, and there are two questions here. Do you ask users for consent to send them marketing, and do your messages include an opt-out link? For this demo, again, I'm choosing no for both, but if you send emails or texts to your audience, be sure to answer these based on how you manage consent and unsubscribes. Next is data breach notification procedures. If you have a formal process for responding to data breaches, you would select yes here. Moving on to policy updates and changes, this section allows you to specify how you'll handle updates to your privacy policy. So the first question, do you wanna notify users of policy updates? This is where you can indicate whether your users will be notified when your policy is updated. Again, this is a demo, I'm selecting no, but choosing yes is typically a best practice. Then the next question, do you require opt-in for material changes? This determines whether users must actively agree to significant changes in your policy. Again, I'm selecting no for this demo, but selecting yes offers users more control and is often recommended for compliance and transparency. Okay, once all required fields are complete, go ahead and click the Generate Privacy Policy button at the bottom right, and User Centrix gets to work creating your privacy policy. Next, you'll land on a confirmation screen that says, your privacy policy is ready. This page provides you with the steps needed to implement the privacy policy, as well as the HTML code you'll need to add your privacy policy to your website. Now, before we dive into those steps, it's important to mention that in this video, I'll be adding this code to a WordPress website. However, the steps I'm about to show you aren't the only way to implement the code. If you're not using WordPress or if your site is managed by someone else, you can send this code to your website manager, IT department, or developer for proper implementation. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to access and prepare the code for using it on a WordPress website. So on this page, you'll see a small box containing a snippet of HTML. Step one says to copy the script tag and paste it into the head section of your website. This is the part of code that loads the policy and ensures it functions correctly. Then step two says to copy the div element and place it wherever you want the privacy policy to show up on your site, such as a dedicated privacy policy page. Okay, so first we'll wanna highlight and copy the script tag and paste it in the head section of my WordPress website. So be sure to highlight the exact section of the HTML shown here 
and make sure you get everything before that closing script tag. Then I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy this code. And then next, let's head over to my WordPress site. And in this example, I'm using a free plugin called WP Code. I highly recommend it because it makes it easy to insert scripts into the header, body, and footer of your website without having to touch any core files. Okay, after activating the plugin, hover over Code Snippets in the left sidebar and click on Header and Footer. This will bring you to the plugin's main interface where you'll see three sections, header, body, and footer. These correspond to the parts of your site where you could place custom code. Now, we're gonna be pasting the script code that we copied from user Centrix into the header section. This is important because the instructions specify that the code must be placed in the head tag of your website. So simply click in the header box and paste the script. I'm gonna Mac, so I'm pressing Command V to paste the code I copied earlier. And then once that's in there, click the Save Changes button in the upper right corner. And then after saving, you should get a message confirming that your settings have been updated. And if you're using a caching plugin, you'll wanna clear your cache to make sure the changes go live for everyone else. And in my case, I'm using the Speedy Cache plugin. So up at the top admin toolbar, I'll select Delete All Cache. And then that's it for step number one. Next, let's move on to step number two and display the privacy policy on a live WordPress page. Now for this example, I'm gonna create a brand new page, but you can add the policy to an existing page if that works better for your site. So from the WordPress dashboard, go ahead and hover your mouse over pages and click add new. And this will open a blank page. And then I'm gonna title this privacy policy. And then once your page is created, click the blue plus button to add a new block and then search for the custom HTML block. Then once you find it, select it. And from here, you could paste in your HTML code. So in order to do that, we'll need to head back to user Centrix and copy the second part of the code. This is the div element that controls where your privacy policy will actually be shown on your site. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard to copy it, but make sure you highlight and copy this exact section of the code. Then back at WordPress, simply paste the div element directly into the custom HTML block. And then once that is in place, we'll publish this page to make it live. So click the Publish button. And then once published, let's view it and see what it looks like. And just like that, we have a full privacy policy page on our website. Your privacy policy is now live and viewable. Now, one thing you may notice is that because of how the embed code is written, the privacy policy content includes its own H1 heading. And since the WordPress page already has a title, this results in two privacy policy headings showing up on the page. On top of that, the font used inside the embedded content doesn't match the rest of my site, which might be distracting depending on your theme. And if that's something you want to clean up, here's a quick fix on using the full HTML version instead. So first, go back to User Centrix and click the Done button. And this takes you to your Privacy Policy Management screen where you'll see the policy you just created. And then to access the full HTML file of this policy, you'll see three little icons there to the right. Click the one in the middle, that's the download icon, and that will download the HTML file to your computer. Next, we'll wanna open and edit this file in some sort of code editor. Right now I'm using Sublime Text, but use the code editor that you're most comfortable with. And then all I did here was I was able to drag the file into Sublime, and this allowed me to view and edit the code. So inside the HTML file, the only edit I made was I removed the H1 tag that says privacy policy so it wouldn't appear twice on the page. Then I selected everything inside the main div element and copied it. So I'm pressing Command C on my keyboard. Then back in WordPress, within the custom HTML block where we originally pasted the embed div, I'll replace it with the code that I just edited. And then we'll obviously want to publish these changes. And then when we go to the front end of the site, you'll see that the privacy policy now displays only one heading. And when we scroll down, the fonts and formatting match the rest of my blog. This looks much cleaner 
and more professional, in my opinion. All right, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope it helped you create and publish your privacy policy page that looks great and keeps you compliant. And user Centrix makes the process simple, and best of all, it's completely free to get started. So if you're ready to create your own privacy policy page, just click the link in the video description below to sign up for a free account. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're looking to start a blog, check out these two videos on how to build, grow, and monetize a WordPress blog. They'll walk you through the entire process step by step. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.